Welcome to another episode of the Dynamic Thriving Podcast. I am Marianne Pack, your host, spiritual medium, author and publisher, and joy advocate, guiding you into all things life transformational. And this series, this whole year has been about unmuted voices because I realized so many of us have muted our voice because it wasn't safe to speak up, to speak our truth, to speak into the world of who we are. And it's and it's also not just a physical voice, but it's our expression in life. It's how we express ourselves, who we are and what we want, what we desire, what we need. So I thought it was really important for us to start talking about unmuting our voice. And I am in the process of interviewing coaches and leaders and transformational leaders and shamans and, and light workers and average Joes even um, that have found a way to unmute their voice um, when it wasn't safe before. And they transformed through that and realized, yes, I am worthy to speak up. Yes, I am worthy to live my life. And today my guest is, is Matthew Clapwick. Welcome, Matthew. I am so happy that you are with me today. Thank you very much, Marianne. I'm really happy to be here. Filled with joy. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so let's just jump right in because we're going to get started. Matthew has some amazing ways that he began to unmute his voice. And um, I want I want you all to hear his story because some of you are going to relate to this. So when did you realize that it wasn't safe for you to use your voice, to speak up, to live your truth, express your life? Um, when was that? When did you realized that it wasn't safe? Yeah, so I, I think for me, it really started at a really, really young age, not from an, a fear of, you know, being hurt physically, but mm -hmm. hurt emotionally and, and just the connection, because I grew up super shy and introverted, and some people have that, but stack on top of that, having a stuttering impediment, and with a really, really mm -hmm. high voice where people would say, you know, you're, you're very feminine, and so just over time, I just realized that my voice didn't really matter. I never saw myself as a leader. Um, I just became a follower. Anyone that would say, you know, Matthew, you're this or this, um, you know, you're, 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 you're not good enough. All of these things, I would just say, okay, well, that, that is the truth, you know, because I could not discern what was real and what was not. Uh, I did grow up with, you know, parents that are probably going to be listening to this uh, that loved me and tried to give me the, the skills, but I would never really practice them. I would just listen and, and, and uh, but never apply. And so I, I think the biggest thing for me was just being full of fear, fear that, you know, what are they going to think about me? Or I really could not express who I was growing up at a young age, all the way to like, middle school and high school. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where it all started for me. Were there like indoctrinated beliefs that made you, you know, well, I, I call them indoctrinated beliefs because they could be from, for me, it was more religious and family, but cultural society, you know, who told you to believe the lie that you were not worthy enough to speak up or you know, where did some of that kind of learning, you know, even besides being an introvert, I mean, that's a, that can be a personality thing, but to withdraw from almost the world. What yeah. were some of those beliefs that you picked up that made you say, oh, this is who I am and this is all I can be? Yeah. So I also had a, uh, a you know, in school, they kind of had two, two classrooms, you know, they have one classroom for all the, you know, quote unquote, normal kids that can uh, be able to study and things like that. And then they had the special class for those who had learning disabilities. Oh, yes. And I was actually in that one. And I didn't even know what the special class was. I would show up to a class and they would say, er, er, everybody, you know, these are the 10 questions we need you guys to complete by tomorrow. Uh, but Matthew, Jill and Peter, you just need to do the first five. I'm like, oh, this is cool you know i'm getting a special treatment but i didn't know what special meant and mm -hmm. later on did i realize oh they don't believe they, they don't believe that i can they're not even challenging me and so mm -hmm. that's where it kind of started off in elementary school but when i went to middle school most of my friends went to a different school 
Um, and so I pretty much are going to a whole new environment and I realized that I can re recreate myself here. And even though I have like a learning disability where like I can't really learn something and just apply it right away, I have to be one of those that cram every, uh, read every day and do cramming the day before just to get decent grades. And um, yeah, so that's kind of where things started to realize it was, it was a bit about the school uh, also, when I'm just with different friend circles where, you know, people, I would, I would share something and people like, Matthew, that's stupid. And I just realized that I started making that connection that, oh, I'm stupid. Instead of yes. what I said was probably wasn't the right thing to say. Um, but I just started to believe that, like, oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not, I'm not smart enough. So I'm just going to listen and just be a yes guy, you know, in the background. People ask mm -hmm. me, hey, Matthew, what do you think about this? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. I didn't have a mind of my own. Right. So in that, like, how did it affect your life overall? Like your relationships, your, it could be, um, you know, your health as you grew up, your choice of careers or, you know, your college, anything like that. So how did it affect other parts of your life uh -huh. if you're just always being a yes person? I, I think you become the product of your environment. Um, so for me, I wasn't in the most positive environments. Um, I, so my dad's from Holland and my mom's from the Philippines. So I'm a jalapeno, like half and half. So I'm half European, half Asian. And I didn't really know where to fit in because even in, in the school, you know, uh, people would just gather with their demographics, but I kind of fit in with everybody and didn't really know how to show up in either one of them. And, um, it just led to a lot of, you know, identity crisis in terms of like, okay, who am I and how do I want to show up in the world? And I didn't even really think about any real careers. So whatever was given to me, like my parents said, you know, traditional, you can be a doctor or a lawyer, or a lawyer or a doctor. I was bad at math. So I thought I had four choices, but I only had two. And uh, I, I said, well, I don't like public speaking. So maybe I'll be a doctor and I'll help people that way. And that was my career choice. I'm like, okay, I'm going to be a doctor. He asked me why. Like, I don't want to help people. But there was really no ingrained um, compass that was guiding me. It was just whatever people said. You know, I never pre-planned my day. I didn't know anything about habits. All the things I know now, falling into personal growth, um, I was just more a victim than, than seeing and just seeing that, okay, the cards that God or the world or dealt me, I just got to, you know, you know, that's what I have and that's all I can do. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, yeah, I, there's so many times, yeah, we just take on what other people think we should do because we, we, we haven't found that, that place of what we want. Well, you know, there's so many times that we're just not even, it's not even uh, allowed to express what you may want, or you may not even know because you've always been told you know, well, do this, follow this path, follow this path. And that may not be your path. You know, that, that may not be there. So what, when were some of the aha moments? I mean, sometimes it's a jolt for me. It was a jolt at 34 when I, my physical body crashed, you know, that was the big awakening aha moment for me. And then more came along the way. And then other times it's just a culmination of all these things as we grow. What were some of the aha moments? When did some of those start kicking in gear for you? I think the biggest thing is when I realized the shift that um, I can actually have control out of, out of this world. And it actually is a game of mm -hmm. life. And before that, I just lost myself into video games because that's the only way I thought where I can really express myself, where you can be competitive, you can create, you can collaborate, you can be whoever you want. Um, and, uh, you know, and there's rules that are set in place where you can win. Um, but just with, without that, uh, that knowledge, you know, I just lost myself video games. So my parents actually dragged me to my first personal growth seminar uh, against my will. And they, they tricked me. Like I thought I was going to, or uh, there's out here, there's an arcade with uh, called Playland where you, it's like an epic arcade. I'm like, yes, I worked hard for my school and now I get to, you know, enjoy these video games. And then I get tricked going to a personal growth seminar where people have these name tags say hi my name is peter hi my name is paul and i'm like oh my gosh what what's going on here 
and I'm sitting in this room. There's this adult uh, on the on on the stage, and he and he's saying, you know, uh, life is a game. And even though he was kind of speaking my language, I didn't resonate with him because I'm like, this guy has no idea what I'm going through. What can this guy teach me that I know myself? Uh, but something magic happened where there was other teenagers there, and they created a sharing circle. And one by one, we were asked about our dreams, our goals, our insecurities, and our life goals. And it was the first time I was actually there listening to other people open up and share. And I realized, wow, they're just like me. And that was like a little click that, that was the first click. And the second thing is when they actually asked me to share, and I did, and I was supported, I was encouraged, and I was acknowledged mm -hmm. instead of put down, criticized, and discouraged. I was like, wow, you know, maybe I have it wrong. Maybe the beliefs that I created myself are really not, not true to what is true. So then a thought came in my head, well, you know, I always thought I was a leader, but what if, sorry, what, I always thought I was a follower, but what if I could be a leader? You know, um, and then that's where that little seed was planted. And I said, you know what, I don't know how, I'm going to find out how to be a leader. So I'm going to help other youth that are struggling just like I am. So they don't have to grow up with all this disconnections and insecurities that really we don't need all that baggage. And so that was kind of the, the first kind of pillar that came into my life. And then that helped me be in the right environments and around with the right people. And I was now being influenced by a positive environment. Uh, I was in, and through those, you start meeting other people that mentors, coaches that actually believe in you. And when you have someone believe in you, it, it's so, it's so different. Like you feel like unstoppable. You feel like you want to, you want to make them proud and we will do more things for others than we ever do for ourselves. True. True. So about what age was this that you were tricked into going to a personal growth, seminar, personal development? 17 years old. 17. Yeah. So then did that change your trajectory for college or what did you do there? Yeah. So it was just in, in the middle. So I was ju just about to go into uh, Simon Fraser University in the Mike Molecular Biology program. And then I'm also now being unlocked into this personal growth and I'm now seeing the whole world. And I start realizing, you know what, this is not what I want. Mm -hmm. And I started saying, well, what do I want? And I start interviewing different people who actually already, you know, five, 10, 20 years ahead of me. Cause I, I got some really good, um, uh, a council where they said, Matthew, why don't you go out and interview your future and find out if really that future is what you want it to be. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. So I interviewed people had their own practice. And, and a, a lot of them, when I saw, saw their lifestyle, they, they didn't have the relationships I wanted. They didn't have the philanthropy impact I wanted. A lot of them were stressed, you know, on their second or third marriage, right? So it the, the model that I was sold when I was growing up, like, that's not what I want. And so mm -hmm. that led me to learning more about business, entrepreneurship. And I asked them, you know, if you can do it over, what would you do? They would say, I would have started my own business. I would learn about financial literacy. And so I started getting their advice and started putting myself into different pathways. And the personal growth is, is world is such a huge space. It helps you discover who you are and how you want to show up in the world. And if you just work on you, the vehicles and, and the people will show up. And then there'll be a, what my mentor uh, says, there'll be like a heavenly click where there's opportunities in your life that will show up. And you would just say, you know what, I, I, I want to do that one. And mm -hmm. if you don't ask you why, I don't know. It just, it just connects with me, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's kind mm -hmm. of how everything all started. And that led to, you know, and increasing my confidence and then understanding different environments, understanding that your health is, is such important as your wealth, understanding about entrepreneurship. So everything just... <laughs> As, even though it was at 17 and now I'm 36, you know, it was a long journey, but that was like the pivot point that I can still feel where things change. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That's, that's just, um, I love that you were able to start finding that at a young age, you know, before you stepped into, you know, got halfway through university. 
and realized then that, you know, you had to pivot much greater. What, what wise advice is to go interview your future, you know, interview those who have look like they're in the place where you think you want to be and um, to find out that, oh, that's just, that that isn't what that isn't the values that isn't the way I want to live my life. You know, and if this is the outcome of that kind of choice, you know, that's not for me. So what what great wisdom you were offered during that time. So. Um, as you started to transform and, and shift, you know, you, you're talking about, you know, you had to shift these, you have to shift these beliefs. You have to realize now, what do I want now? What now? What? And you're constantly asking yourself now, what? So now what now, now what is this provided for you? As you've, if you've learned to become a leader and you've unmuted your voice and you started speaking up, well, how are you using that now? What is that? Um, what does that look like for you? What are you all involved in? Yeah, so I, I think one of the the biggest things I realized is that how much self confidence or self worth matters. And you know, in what we're taught from our mentors, you know, net worth is basically we all know what net worth is. We want to have wealth, but what is self worth? Self worth is something you can't buy. It's knowing mm -hmm. what your core values are in life and living those values in the world. And so the more I realized, what do I value? Uh, the, the, the things that are really important to me uh, are faith, family, uh, you know, philanthropy, uh, uh, fitness, fun, all, all the good F words, right? <laughs> um, the, 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 those are the things that really, uh, really drive me. But because I was looking up to people that had the lifestyle I wanted and they were willing to teach me. And yeah. it really opened up a whole door that, you know what? If, if they, I, I wonder, like, why are they going out and helping? Well, why are very successful people that have an abundance mentality give? And I realized giving is, is, is such a powerful thing. You can give your time, your resources, your prayers to other people, and it makes a huge difference. And I realized that everything in life is like, uh, is, is, is like, a, is like a, a, a jar, right? And you can make deposits in relationships or you can make withdrawals. Right. And so over time, I just realized that, you know, people were depositing in me and I just really wanted to pay it back. Mm -hmm. And then the others, I, so all, all of these different things, you know, came together. But um, one of the, the biggest shifts after becoming an entrepreneur and, you know, uh, becoming uh, controlling my own time was I, I was actually five years ago, I was um, getting into my car, you know, getting ready for a meeting as I normally was. And I'm driving down the highway, uh, down the, not really the highway, but the, the street. And I was going down and my car lost control. Mm -hmm. And it started to swerve right into oncoming traffic. And, you know, if anyone ever had like a near-death experience, time just slows down, adrenaline starts happening. And as I'm going down and, and uh, cars are coming up, I just freeze. And it's like time, I get to reflect on like my whole life. Like if to see all these flashes about you know me growing up but most of the flashes actually were not really my life but all the, the points in my life where i didn't take the risk or i wasn't bold enough it was like flashes of all my regrets in my life instead of all the things i'm grateful for and uh it actually was one of the the, the greatest gifts because even though i was able to uh you know be, because of the divine invention i uh, survived that accident uh, in just some miracle way, um, I had those two greatest gifts and I realized that, you know what, I, I think I really need to really build this youth program that I thought, uh, which I promised myself at age 17 that I, I would do, mm. but I was too fearful because I said, well, I don't have the time and all the resources. I don't know the people. Let me become successful and then I'll help other mm -hmm. youth become successful. And I realized success is really just you know, there's no destination. You will never be successful. It's, it's, are you living your core values? Are you living what you want to be like in the world? And then that gives you the authority to help others. Yes. So that led to the path of telling everybody, you know what, I don't know how, but I'm going to start a youth program and uh, I want to help these youth to, to empower other youth. And uh, I, don't, I don't know how to do it, but within two and a half weeks, um, I attracted uh, the co-founder of Youth Empowering Youth Today, 
um, we, we were actually, I was speaking at a, an event about money and finance. And I, I told people my dream at the end, because I said, I'm just gonna tell everybody my dream. And I'm gonna speak into existence until it until it is there. And, um, you know, Lev uh, Karrison, he, he walked up to me and said, Hey, you know what, let's get together for coffee. I think we can chat a lot more. And I told my dream, he says, I have the same dream. And I was like, wow, you know what? There's other people out there that have the same dream, but they, they don't speak it. And because we don't speak it, we never live it. And so that little, you know, car accident led to a, a nice little conversation. And that conversation led to now a global uh, youth movement where we have over a thousand youth all over Canada, US. We've now gone into Rwanda, India, Lagos, um, where youth go through our program for nine weeks. They find the uh, learn leadership skills and life skills, and they go back and help other youth. And in Canada, we pay them to become a leader. Mm -hmm. And um, that has led to amazing things where some of these youth are now uh, getting great jobs and even have been on a TEDx uh, youth uh, stages, getting their voice heard and seen and understood. Um, so the ripple effect has been amazing and it still lights me up today, so. Mm -hmm. That's so beautiful. Yeah, I always say, you know, our mess is our message. What we've worked through is typically going to start pouring out of us. And uh, I, you know, I like that you talked about that the giving, it's, it's a natural outflow. Um, it's, it's not like out of, uh, you know, instead of giving or serving out of a duty or responsibility or something. This is an outflow of your love, of your joy, of your, of your realizing that, um, yeah, you can live free. You can live unmuted. You can be a leader. You can be whatever, you know, and encouraging these young people. I love that this is a global movement that you've started and what perfect timing. Talk to us a little bit about how, you know, you're helping these young people unmute their voices and become leaders and, and um, how is that affecting their lives? Yeah, it, it, it's, you know, you talk about your message is, is your message. And I truly see everything from, from being super shy to not knowing where to fit in to everything was like a preparation to be where mm -hmm. I am now. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't know how to self-express, I was able to develop the skill. One of my talents is in the listening in the listening of not just listening to people, but the behind the message. Uh, because I was very shy and introverted back in, you know, just going back in uh, high school, um, when before uh, 17, people would come to me and tell me about their challenges, their insecurities, their secrets, yeah. and they knew I wouldn't tell anybody. So I'd be like a sounding board just with this, not really a sounding board, just someone to listen to. And I realized like, wow, people really are suffering in silence. Yes. And they were muting their voices. Yes. So later on, when I learned how to self-express, personal growth, about the reason why we don't don't uh, share is because we have a filter on how we think people are going to listen to us, and because of that filter, it limits our self-expression. And so, learning about how to connect more with youth, uh, one of the things that we've been helping now um, five youth do is create a signature talk on TEDx stage. And one of the, the first steps is to sit down with them and find out what is your message you want to tell the world? You know, if you had the whole world's attention, all 7 billion plus people, what would you say to the world from your world? And it, it makes them think really, really deeply. And then from there, we find out their why. We say, okay, why is that important to you? Why, why, why? And when you get to the center of the core, it's like your inner compass. And you're able to really see the things that matter and that don't matter. And once they really connect with their why, how they want to show up in the world, it's just so powerful because now youth are really self-expressing themselves, not from a place of, hey, I want approval. They're, they're, they're just sharing from a place of giving because they know now their mess is their message. And all of these um, now five youth that, that went through our, our training and are now TEDx uh, youth speakers, um, they're sharing that message, not from a place of, uh, you know, help me, help me. It's what can I give? This is what I struggled with. And this is how I serve you. And, um, I really saw that through the pandemic 
where, you know, for two years, everything's shut down. There's no social contact. You know, youth are just really, really hungry to, to connect and express themselves, but they don't know how. And our program was first in person, but then when the pandemic happened, we said, well, what if we did this online? Because all, now all the schools were closed. Mm -hmm. And we realized that youth are way more interactive and expressing their unmuted voices, not just through voice, but some of them are more expressive through, you know, could be, uh, you know, chatting uh, on, on, on Zoom and sharing their views on there. Or they want to just express themselves with emojis or they want to express mm -hmm. themselves with music or whatever, or, or just with pictures, you know? Um, so I, we realized that w when they were given the opportunity to just show up and just be acknowledged, um, which is one of the most powerful things we do in the program, where at the end we asked them, what do you want to be acknowledged for? And mm -hmm. a lot of them have this deer in headlights, like they've never had that question asked for. Mm -hmm. You know, we, in most conversations, we're usually guessing what the person wants to hear, but imagine this, imagine you ask that person, what do you want to be acknowledged for? And that you say, well, I want to be acknowledged that, you know what, it was hard showing up to, to, to this the last nine weeks doing the homework. It was very, you know, turning my camera on. Most classes I go to are, you know, most youth are not even listening or uh, they're doing things in the background. The, the cameras are off. But here I have to be seen, heard and express myself, do homework. It was hard, but I did it. And then the facilitator would now say that same message back to them. Hey, hey, John, I just want to let you know that we really acknowledge you for showing up for even though it was difficult, it, you, you made it through. And because of that, we've seen you grow. We've seen the connections that you're made with all the other youth. And it, and we really do appreciate that. And we acknowledge you for that. Mm -hmm. And it just lights them up because now they've got exactly what they want. And yeah, it's really, really powerful. Yeah. That is so, so awesome. I am so thrilled for this program. Um, you can reach Matthew on Instagram. He says this is the best way to kind of follow him. And tell us a little bit about the the Matthew Millions. Um, um, I know you do work in the financial end of things. How How is that? How does that work? Yeah, so there's actually two things with that. So Matthew Millions, <clears throat> Millions has nothing to do with money, which people mm -hmm. find is, is funny. Um, but it's actually um, one of the people I look up to is a guy named Charlie Rocket. And um, he was a, uh, when he was struggling as a youth, he created a superhero version of himself of something he, he wants to aspire to be. So he, mm -hmm. he created an identity of Charlie Rocket. Uh, so for me, I... Matthew Millions is the end destination of the ultimate person I want to be because Matthew in, in the Bible uh, means God's gift or, mm -hmm. or God given and millions is the lives that I want to impact. So when I put this together, that's really what my goal is to mm -hmm. use the gifts and uh, the talents that not just God gave me, but empower a, a million leaders that can impact a billion lives. And so that's the, the kind of overall mission that I have with Matthew Millions is that the that's a destination. And it's really just about others. It's, it's about, because my why is to empower people to feel their dreams are alive and, and, and chase it and empower everyone around them to do the same, live mm -hmm. impossibly, be powerful. And so I do that in everything, especially in the finance. So I help people with their money, you know, their money beliefs and just, you know, people would call it as a, like, as a business card, I have the most boring business card. It says insurance rep and mutual fund representative, like the the financial industry is just so heavily regulated that we can't really market ourselves or give anyone any advice, whether on social media. It's always through one on one, which it should be. It mm -hmm. should be a one on one conversation. Uh, but one thing I really love is money is kind of the the foundation of everything. Because if you see how people treat money, you see how people will treat others. You see how people would, uh, you know, when you have a lot of money, it just magnifies you. And so I love finding out what is the what is the, what is their goal around their money and and what's been holding them back and i feel i i really like diving deep and finding out their belief systems about money and finance and finding out how we can help you know mm -hmm. um build their self-worth and their net worth right yes, so, yes, yes, yes that's how we create real wealth yes absolutely 
I find this intriguing because an, another coaching friend of mine and I are actually working on a um, kind of a worthiness program, you know, that we want to develop. Um, so touching into that, you know, developing your, your self-worth so that it also develops your net worth, you know, because they, they have to be, they're, they're definitely connected. Um, because if we don't believe we are worthy of abundance, in all areas of our life, if we don't see the richness in all areas of our life, you know, we, we won't attract some of the, some of the other things that we want, you know, if it just, they're just so, so interconnected, our self-worth, our worth, our worthiness, you know, and, and I, so this is one of my messes that is becoming my message because you know, my background is not from a feeling of worthiness. It's a feeling of unworthiness the way I was taught. So um, I, I love that you're including that worthiness factor because that is the foundation. It's just like you said, it's your core values. It's what you believe. It's it's who you really are on the inside, that spiritual, eternal part of us, which I believe we all have. So um, I want to thank you so much, Matthew, for being my guest and and um, sharing your story and sharing what you're doing with the youth and 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 growing into this huge person, you know, I'm so proud of you. And um, uh, I just so look forward to sharing this message around the world. So I appreciate you, Matthew. Thank you very much, Marianne. It, it, it's such a privilege, and and you, you said it right when it comes to self worth. Um, and this kind of goes back to the beginning of our conversation about indoctrinated beliefs mm -hmm. like, like it's normal to not believe in yourself it's normal to for people to be dependent on on government or things like that and so if we can just create that change where just help people believe in themselves help them just keep mm -hmm. the promise they make themselves build discipline and patience and knowing that everything starts from there um yeah we, we can really change us and then change the world so thank yes. you very much for this opportunity to share absolutely i am so glad you've been here um Thank you everyone for joining us and listening and be sure and subscribe and like this uh, podcast. If this has touched your heart and if it is, you know, somebody who is a young person or uh, of someone who is, who wants to unmute their voice and you know, this story would just be perfect for them to hear, share it with them so that you can help my work go around the world and share more love and joy. And as always, you are welcome to visit our website, wearejoybooks.com, because this Unmuted Voices series will be an anthology, a book anthology um, that will be published in January. So I am so looking forward to sharing this in book form. And if you have a book that is calling through you, uh, be sure and contact me and I would love to help you become a published author. So, Matthew, do you have anything else you would like to share with us on a closing, beautiful um, words of wisdom? Yeah, so I, um, I, I think at the end of the day, you know, when, when people, uh, when I listen to different podcasts and different things, um, it's always knowing that your intention. You know, my, my, my friend recently did their her, uh, TEDx talk uh, on the power of intention. And if we just have just realize, you know, most people actually, we should get confidence just by having good intentions. Like your intention to just want to be better, your intention to just want to grow, um, should give us confidence. And so if we can just know that we can connect with others, we can open up new possibilities, we can go in those different environments, get mentors and coaches, and just believe that you, you know, you are worth it, right? You matter. So mm -hmm. have good intentions and just, and just know that could be even start as simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. Because even look how big, you know, your intention was to start this program with youth. And as you started speaking it and started sharing it in a couple of weeks, another person came on board and it had to just continue to get bigger to, to end up now to be a global program. So um, what a beautiful way to unmute your voice. I love that story, man. You. I appreciate you. Thank you everyone for joining us. We will see you next time on Unmuted Voices.